Okay, so today we're going to look at changing the strings on a nylon string guitar, which is also known as a classical guitar or a Spanish guitar. This is a, a flamenco guitar, which is a variation on the same thing. All you really need is your guitar and a new set of strings. And make sure you get the strings that suit your guitar. So this is a flamenco guitar, so I've got flamenco strings. If you have a classical guitar, get classical strings. If you have a half size or three quarter size guitar, like a child's guitar, then make sure you get strings that are made for that size of instrument. Now, if you put strings on, um, what you're going to end up with is some extra bits of string at this end and this end, which you can play with, but you're going to find it quite annoying. So you're probably going to want to cut them off. And I use wire cutters, but if you don't have wire cutters, you can actually use nail clippers. Nail clippers are um, fine for nylon strings. Steel strings might struggle but for nylon string guitars they're actually very soft, it's very easy to cut them with, with nail clippers as well. So, that, so that's uh, you know next level of tools. Now when you're turning the machine heads you can turn them by hand, it's not a problem, but it's quicker if you have a string winder. It's not necessary to have one but if you've got one it's going to make it a little bit easier. Now you also may want to clean your guitar when you take the strings off, which I would recommend, especially if you haven't changed your strings for a long time, your guitar is probably really dirty. You probably don't realize it until you clean it and you'll see how much comes off. Um, so to clean it, again, this is optional, but I use Jim Dunlop spray wax and you need a cloth to put that on. And they use that for the whole guitar apart from the fretboard, which you use, lemon, I use lemon oil, so Jim Dunlop 65 uh, lemon oil, and you need another cloth for that. Okay, so that's the basics there. We have the guitar, strings, something to cut the strings, string winder, something to clean all the, the body and the neck and the headstock, and something else just to clean the fretboard. But all these things are optional. All you really need is your guitar and the strings. Okay, so step one, we're going to take the old strings off. Now, you can't really go too wrong with this step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the string. If I turn this clockwise, you can hear I'm making that string lower. I'm reducing the tension. So I just need to keep doing that until there's no tension in it. Now, I can do it by hand, or if you have a string winder, you can do it with that. So I'm just going to do all the strings like that. Tune them down until they sound quite low. So I can hear all the tension's gone out of them. Okay, so now we've taken all the tension out of the strings. Now it's safe to cut them off. So you can use the wire cutters. I don't, I don't really hold, hold a part of the string because I'm always worried it's gonna pop off and hit me in the face. It never does that, but you know, you worry about these things. Just to show you, nail clippers, just as good as wire cutters. Cut some fine, easy. Yeah, so you don't need the wire cutters. At this end, you can just pull that off now. So I'm just hooking my thumbnail underneath and just pulling that through. You can't really get it wrong. You, nothing's going to go wrong when you take the strings off. And then we do the other end. The other end's a bit of a mess with all these longer bits of string, so I'm just gonna move them out of the way, do one at a time. These are tied on with a knot, so what you might need to do sometimes is just turn that machine head round a bit so you can see the knot, then it's much easier to undo it. I'm just gonna go in there to undo that. If it's really stuck, you can always get the wire cutters in there and just cut the knot. Normally it's not necessary.
again there's not really anything that can go wrong at this, at this stage taking the strings off nothing's going to happen so don't worry about it just get them off any way you can this one's a bit annoying to turn that around so i can see what's going on there we go I don't normally do this laying on the table. I normally sit it on my lap, but it's easier for you to see what I'm doing, having it on the table. All those old strings, just throw them away. No use for those. I normally put them in a recycling bin and they never complained about it. Okay, at this stage it's good to check just to see, has your nut fallen off? Sometimes they fall off. And this one is not glued in, it's just the tension of the strings that holds it in place. Now if you have a look at the nut, some of the grooves are thicker than others. The grooves, the thick groove goes where the thick string goes. So if it does fall off and you're not sure which way around it goes, the thick string goes here, doesn't it? The low E string goes here. So make sure the thick groove also goes there. And then make sure it's nicely lined up with the neck. So if it's, and it's just sticking out like that, it's not gonna work. You know, you've gotta make sure it's in the, sitting in the right place. Um, this is an unusual guitar. It has individual saddles, but what you might have is, is one long saddle. Probably all of you will have one long saddle here. Same thing with that one. If that falls out, uh, if you look at it, one side of the saddle is higher than the other, and the high side goes where the thick E string goes, where the, the low E string goes. So the high side of the saddle will go here, and the low side of the saddle will go there. So if, if those parts fall off, just make sure you put them back on the right way. So the next thing I'm going to do with this uh, guitar is I'm, I'm, I'm going to clean it. You don't have to clean it, you could just put the strings on, um, but I like to give it a clean. So I've got uh, some Jim Dunlop spray wax here and I'm going to use this to clean all the varnished parts of the guitar so not the fretboard everything else apart from the fretboard so I just spray it on the cloth don't spray it on the guitar because it goes everywhere don't want it to get on the machine heads or anything I'm just going to give that wipe it on put a bit more on there actually So again, you can skip this bit if you want. I've got all the chapters in the description of this video. You can just skip to the next stage if you don't want to clean it. Okay, so just wiping all that on. I like to have a nice clean guitar. Feels really nice when you, when you play a clean, brand, brand new strings, clean guitar. So now I've just turned the cloth over. I'm using the other side of the cloth to polish the guitar. Just try and get it under the light so you can see what you're doing. Let me see if you polished it. It's pretty easy. Can't really get it wrong, you know. So the one thing is to remember is spray their products on the cloths, not on the guitar. That way you can control where it goes. It doesn't go everywhere. So I'm just polishing off that product that I put on earlier on. thing I'm going to do is the fretboard. I'm going to use some lemon oil. I use the Jim Dunlop products but there's loads of different brands of this. Give it a shake. This comes in a little applicator bottle. It's got a little piece of felt on the top there. So you basically just knock it on the guitar like that. Now 
now you can just sort of draw it on like you using a thick pen. And I just like to go in between each fret, make sure I've covered that whole section of fretboard with lemon oil. What this is going to do, it's going to clean some of the dirt off. It's going to basically sort of break down all that dead skin and sweat and airborne particles and grease maybe if you you know if you if you cook in this in the same area that you have your guitar in all the airborne stuff from your cooking and stick to the guitar as well um, so it's going to start to break all that down so when I wipe it off with a cloth it's going to take a lot of that dirt off and it's also going to lubricate the fretboard when I say lubricate, I mean it's going to condition, it's going to moisturize the fretboard, so we're not <laughs> lubricating. Um, okay. Don't need any more of that. And then here, I've got another cloth. This is actually uh, one of Tommy Emmanuel's socks, but that's a story for another time. And I'm just going to clean this off. I'm going to go in there, my finger, get into the corners where the frets are. I'm going to do this once and I'm going to do it again. I get the worst of it off. So what you're going to find is a lot of this comes off and then a tiny little bit will be left. And that's the part that will absorb into your fretboard and condition it. This is an ebony fretboard. It's not treated. You may have another wood. Rosewood is the most common. Um, now those woods will dry out over time, particularly if you live in a colder country like the UK. In the winter you put the heating on, that really dries out the wood in your guitar. I'm just going over this again now with a different part of the cloth. And this is going to make sure that my fretboard doesn't dry out doesn't crack over time, which is possible. I've never seen it happen, but apparently it's possible. So, you know, I don't want to take that risk with my nice guitar, so I'm making sure I condition the fretboard. Okay, so that's all done. So now we can put the strings on. So Daddario strings. I've got the black flamenco strings because I really like the look of them. I don't think they sound any different, but I like the way they look. So these are nicely labeled, so it's quite useful. Sometimes they're color coded and you have to check the packet. These ones have a label, which is great. So I'm going to go first string, I'm going to do them in order. One, two, three, four, five, six. So first string, which is the high E. I'm going to put that one on first. It tells you here first, and on the other side it says E. So you've got a little tag on there, which you can just pull off. When you unravel the strings, be careful not to tie any knots in it. Okay, so this is probably the most complicated part. So I'm going to do a close up here. So if we take one end of the string, we're going to poke it through, there's a hole in the bridge here. This is the first string, the high E string. I'm going to pull it through, there's more than one way of doing this, but I'm going to show you the way I do it. I'm going to pull it through about, what's that, eight, nine centimeters. Make a loop, come back through the loop, just as if you're tying a simple knot, but go around one, two, three times. Hold the end, pull it tight, make sure your end is down here at the back of the bridge, not on top of the bridge. Pull that tight. That one's done. So now we have second string, which is the B string. Same with that, I'm going to unravel it, making sure I haven't tied any knots in the string. Take that off. Same again. So go through, find the hole, pull it through enough so I can wrap, do three wraps. So about nine centimeters or so coming through. Made a loop through the loop once, twice three times, pull that tight, make sure the end of the string is down here, 
Now don't worry if you can't get it that tight now because we had to tighten the strings up from the other end. The G string's a bit thicker, so when you get to the G string, which is also the third string, let's take that, take that one off. I'm only going to do two wraps here because the string's that much thicker, it just there's not really space for three wraps. So I'm going in third string. Probably take the same amount of string, same length of string. I'm going to make a loop. This time I'm going through once, twice, not three times, just twice this time. Holding it tight, making sure my knot's at the end. Don't worry about all this mess, we'll, we'll tidy the strings up one at a time at the other end of the guitar. Next I have the fourth string, which is the D string. Take that off. Again, I made sure I haven't tied any knots in this string, even though it desperately wants to tie a knot in itself. No knots in that string. You just pull it through and pull it through your hand like that, just to make sure there's no knots in it. So with the D string, going back through the hole, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go around three times again. So one, two, three. Pull that tight. Making sure the knot is down there. It's quite hard to pull it tight. Do what you can. We'll tighten up from the other end anyway. And then I have the A string, which is the fifth string. Take that off. Just gonna unravel this string again. No knots in it. Just put it through your fingers, you can check. Then we do the same again. We go through the hole in the bridge, pull it through about that much, make a loop, and then come back through the loop. One, two, three times. Tighten it up. Sweaty hands, it's quite hard to tighten these up. Okay, move that out of the way. And then last string, which is E6 string. Take that off. Now, sometimes you get a low E string with one curly end. I'm not sure if you can see that. This end has got a different texture to it. To it. Now, I'll make sure that one goes on the headstock end because I don't want it involved in this knot down here. So the normal looking end will go down here. And the same thing with this, I'm going to go through. But this time, again, it's, it's a thicker string. So I'm only going to give it two wraps. And I'll pull it through about the same amount again. Make a loop. Come back through the loop. I'm only coming back through the loop twice this time. One, two. Pull that tight, as tight as you can. There we go. So now we have all six strings on this end. Now we need to attach them at the other end. Okay, so the next step is to attach the strings to the headstock. So first thing is you want to make sure you can see the hole. There's a hole in the barrel there. So I'm going to turn that around so I can see it. I'm going to thread my string end through the hole, pull it through the other side, 
try and pull all, all the slack through. This is really loose, this string. I'm pull that through. So I've got rid of all the slack. And now I, need, I want to tie a knot here. So I'm going to come back up through this gap between the tuner and the headstock. There's a little gap in there. So now I've made a loop. Now I'm going to come through that loop just to tie the most basic knot. So that's the loop coming through there. It's a nine curly string end. Yeah, so that's just a simple overhand knot. And before I tighten it, I'm just going to make sure all the slack has gone through that hole. Now I'm going to tighten the knot. Let's pull it tight. That's nice and tight now. Now I'm not going to tighten this up just yet. I'm going to tie them all on first. A string. Same thing. So I'm going to turn that around. I can see the hole. I'm through the hole. Pull the slack through. So this is not really loose. I pulled it as tight as I can. Come back up through this gap between the uh, the two tuning pegs here. Now I've made a loop, simple loop. I come back through that loop to make the knot. There you go. So you see it's a basic knot. The basic knot you tied hundreds of times. There's nothing special here. I'm making sure I've got all the slack pushed through. Machine head first. And then tighten up. Tight as you can. Don't want any big loops left over. D string, same again, turn that around so that you can see the hole. And as we're tightening these up, we're just making sure they're in the correct nut slot. Yeah, so that's wrong, that nut's not in the right position. Slide the nut up so it's in the right place. E string goes in the E string slot, A string goes in the A string slot, D string through the hole. You just got to be careful here not to tie one string to another one. So just move them out of the way. They're really annoying, but you know, move them out of the way the best you can. Just keep an eye on it. Same thing, I pulled it through, coming back up through the gap in the headstock between the two machine heads. I've made that loop. You see the loop there. I'm coming through the loop I've made to tie a simple overhand knot and before I tighten it up, I'm making sure I've pushed all the slack through, tightening that up nice and tight, tight as I can. So, G string. I can already see the hole for that one. So, I'm just going to poke that through the hole. Pull the slack through. Come back up through the gap in the headstock between the two machine heads. I've made a loop. I come back through that loop. Same thing, just tying a basic overhand knot. Gonna push all that slack through, tighten it up as tight as I can. Okay, that's sitting in the G string nut slot. B string. Again, I can see the hole there, I'm going to turn that one round, poke it through the hole, pull it all the way through, come back up through that gap between the two machine heads in the headstock. I've made the loop and I'll come back through that loop to tie the knot, pushing all my slack through, which I'd already done anyway. Pull that knot nice and tight. There we go. The B string is sitting in the B string nut slot. Finally, the E string. Can't see the hole here, so I'm going to turn that around. There you go, I can see it now. String goes through the hole, put it through, come back up through the gap between the headstock and the machine head. Making sure you're not accidentally tying one string to another. I've made a loop here. 
coming back through the loop. We're just going to poke all the excess string through the hole first. Then I pull that knot tight, my simple overhand knot. There you go. So the next step is to just tighten the strings. So really, we're just going to turn that anti clockwise until that tightens up. I'm just keeping an eye on my knot here. See, that's coming a little bit loose. So I'm just going to grab the end of my string here and pull that tight. There you go. See, I had a little loop there. I don't want that loop. And now that should just tighten up nicely. Yeah, sounds something like an E. Next one, A string, same thing. Anti-clockwise, as I'm tightening it up, I'm keeping an eye on my knot, making sure I don't get any excess little loops coming in, which I think I'm getting. So I'm just gonna grab that string. You can see that, pull it tight. There you go, got rid of that loop. Tighten it up. Every now and then, play the string. Sounds something like an A. Stop there. Same with a D string. Just tighten that up. As you do, look out for any little loops and you can just pull your nut a bit tighter. I'm going to let that come around a bit more. If you do get any excess little loops in the end, it's not the end of the world, but I don't like them, so just make sure I haven't got any. Again, just play the string every now and then. Start to sound like a D. Now do the G string. Same again with the G. Just pull that a bit tighter if you want. Now the strings take a bit longer, so what I could do, of course, is just use my string winder that's so much quicker. Okay, next one, B string. Tightening that up. Now I can see there's some kind of loop going on there that I don't want, so I'll just pull the end, tighten it up a bit. Keep going. I'm just gonna give that another little tighten. Still quite low, so I've got quite a few turns left. Just put that string winder on. String winder, you just clip it on like so, and it just turns like that. That's how they work. I'll do it by hand, it's just easier in this video. Okay, and then finally the high E string. So it's good just to check every now and then that your strings are not tangled up and you're not accidentally hide one string to another. It's quite easy to do that. If, it, if you do anything silly like that, just loosen the string, undo it, and then tighten it up again. Don't try and cut it when they're, when they're tight. You might accidentally cut your string off. Okay, so there, we've got some tension in them now. So this is the headstock end at the moment. Lots of loose strings. And this is the bridge end at the moment. Lots of loose strings. Okay, so before we cut any of those ends off, we're just going to get it properly into tune. D sharp. E. This is the A string. Going up to A. D string.
string. So now we have the strings roughly to pitch, E. in tune. The strings will need to settle in for a bit. The last stage is to cut the excess string. So we're going to start at the headstock end and it doesn't matter if you leave a little bit on but you don't really want all this excess stuff. So I'm just going to cut around about a centimeter or so Remember, you can always cut a bit more off if you feel like you've left it a bit too long. We've cut it too short, or if you accidentally cut a wrong string, you can't put it back on again. So you can always cut in stages if you're nervous about cutting too much off. Okay, so this one, I'm gonna leave about a centimeter. So there's no chance of me accidentally cutting that, which is gonna obviously destroy that string. And it's something, again, I've done it before, do it once and this is so, you feel so stupid you never do it again. So I'm just being very careful not to cut anything I shouldn't be cutting. You can always cut a bit more off later on. This one's a bit long. Now what you could also do now is turn it around to the back, have a look. And you can see this one's a bit longer than all the others so I'm just going to cut that down a bit. Okay, and then we need to cut the strings at the bridge. So at the bridge, same thing. I'm gonna just get that wire cutters in. You can use your nail clippers if you want. And I'm gonna leave a bit less, maybe five millimeters of string on there. The reason for that is because if you leave too much string, it can vibrate um, and make a sound. So I wanna cut Cut off as much as I can without accidentally cutting the you know the whole string or so. Leave about five millimeters or so. Okay, you can always cut more off later. So if you're not sure, just cut a bit off, and then you can always cut some more off afterwards. But you can't put it back on once you've cut it. Stock end, nice and tidy. Strings are still slipping out of tune. Now, what you can do with the tuning, you can leave it like that, you can tune up, you can play for a couple of minutes, it'll be out of tune. You tune up again, play for a couple of minutes, it'll go out of tune. And that'll go on for about a week. Um, I did that for many years and uh, I just got so sick of it. So what I do now, now this is an advanced tip. Only do this if you feel brave and if you you know if you know uh, if you're comfortable, really comfortable tuning your guitar. 
Um, if you're not sure about tuning it, I wouldn't recommend doing this. But what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to tune all of my strings a minor third higher. So I'm going to tune my E string up to G, which is three frets higher. So it's going to become this. I'm going to tune to these notes. So E goes up to G again. Don't have to do this. If you're nervous about doing it, just don't do it. But this, what this is going to do is going to stretch the strings much quicker. I'm sure there'll be lots of people telling me this is going to destroy my guitar. Well, I've been doing it for years. It's never destroyed any, any of my guitars. I only do this with nylon strings. Steel strings you don't need to. So my A string is going up to C. sharp already. A string was C, now it's B. D string was F, now it's E. G string was A sharp, now it's A. The B string was D, now it's C sharp. And the E string was G, now it's F sharp. So they've already stretched a bit. I'm going to leave that overnight and then tomorrow morning I'll tune it up to pitch and then my guitar will stay in tune. So that last step is kind of an advanced tip and only for the, the brave really. If you don't want to do that part, don't do it. Just tune it normally and then you know just put up with the fact that it's going to go out of tune for a week or so. Um, it will settle down. Thanks very much for watching this video. I really hope it helps you to change your strings.